I want to bring in our first guest to discuss more about uh, what we learned from CrowdStrike, uh, and that, of course, is Ahmad Khan, equity analyst uh, for technology at Morningstar. Uh, good morning to you, uh, uh, Ahmed. Uh, this is a uh, really, really fascinating uh, kind of setup here for, for CrowdStrike is, of course, this company both let us know how important it was in the midsummer, but also made probably one of the biggest hiccups in technology history at the same time. So uh, how do we assess, first off, I guess, what we learned from the company uh, with this earnings release that we got yesterday afternoon? Yeah, so uh, as soon as as soon as uh, uh, CrowdStrike reported, uh, you know, the, the IT outage, uh, we actually came out with a note saying that, hey, like some of the mar market commentary on uh, the long term impact on the business due to the IT outage uh, was a bit overblown. Uh, and we saw we saw that play out a, a little bit in the last quarter, uh, but much more so in this quarter. Uh, the company's results remain solid. Now, there is some weakness, uh, which we also sort of mentioned in our earlier notes back in July and August about some of the upsell uh, velocity is going to go down for, for, for CrowdStrike, and we're seeing a bit of that. But at the same time, it remains a high-quality uh, cybersecurity vendor uh, that is uh, benefiting from vendor consolidation in the space, um, in the cybersecurity space. Ahmed, is this because as this world uh, advances and, you know, this is sort of the, the new front for, I guess, for lack of a better word, let's say fraud, and, et cetera, this is where these companies ha have to play defense, that it's almost uh, a requirement, actually it is a requirement, uh, especially if you're a large company with a lot of data, to have this type of technology, be it CrowdStrike or one of its peers or a combination of, of a few of them, that although CrowdStrike had some mishaps, uh, it just has technology that you need to buy, almost like in a, a totally different uh, you know, industry that you don't cover, uh, like Boeing. It's like, hey, Boeing's had mishaps, but they're one of two big airplane makers. So unless you're going to move all your business to Airbus, mm -hmm. Boeing's still going to have demand. Is there a similar uh, kind of, I guess, uh, kind of fallout that's playing out with, with CrowdStrike in terms of just embedded demand for this space? Mm -hmm. For sure. So uh, one way to look at uh, the threat landscape in cybersecurity is to think about it in terms of int intensity and frequency. Uh, and once you sort of look at uh, the intensity of cyber attacks and the frequency of cyber attacks, both of them are pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, so that sets up a very uh, robust demand landscape for cybersecurity vendors. Now to your second point, uh, I don't, it's not so the uh, so cybersecurity or the parts of cybersecurity in which uh, CrowdStrike plays in it is not a duopoly or a monopoly. So there are competitors, mm -hmm. there are companies that could potentially replace CrowdStrike, like Sentinel One or Palo uh, or Microsoft in certain spaces. But at the same time, like you know, end of the day, when cybersecurity operators are making their decisions on whether to you know. Uh, remove a cybersecurity vendor, uh, they're thinking about it more carefully than, than having a knee-jerk reaction. And after having conversations with operators, uh, we were left with the idea that customers are not going to leave en masse from CrowdStrike solutions. At the same time, CrowdStrike is on thin ice in the sense that, uh, it, it, I mean, the fact that it happened once was bad enough, but the company has to ensure that something like this does not repeat itself. So along those lines, I'm seeing that you, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong, kind of reiterated your position from uh, prior to this report, which includes a, a fair value estimate of $300 a share, which, of course, it was actually you know, significantly below that, uh, kind of in the lows of both the market around the beginning of August, but also kind of the height of the uncertainty with this particular uh, you know, mishap that they had. Uh, obviously, the stock's recovered. It's giving back some today. Uh, so obviously, nothing that you saw from there report, which included, I think, a little bit of disappointing guidance, despite the beat on the numbers that they provided for the quarter reported, uh, changes that picture for you. Uh, you still feel uh, this stock at its current uh, level is a little bit overvalued given the circumstances. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting because we thought the stock was very overvalued before the crash. The stock was trading at 390. Mm -hmm. We had a 300 value estimate. Then the then the stock went the other way. It was trading in the in the in the 210 levels, and we we thought that that was also a market overreaction. Uh, and since then, the stock has had uh, quite a remarkable rally. 
So right now we do think it's marginally overvalued. Uh, but at the same time, from a quality perspective, we continue to like CrowdStrike. Uh, we just think that some of the gross assumptions that are baked into um, the street's uh, valuation of the name uh, are a bit rich. So along those lines then, uh, Ahmed, I'm sure as someone who's, who's looking at this uh, likely f largely from a fundamental picture, trying to find, hey, what's this business worth based off of the earnings information, et cetera, when you see a name that kind of has this trading volatility, like you said, hey, at $200, it's way below your fair value estimate, but at 400 it's mm -hmm. way above it, and it's been in those two mm -hmm. levels in like the last, I don't know, six months. That I'm sure, I'm sure can be a little bit frustrating as someone who's trying to, you know, put a put a single dollar target on this. Do you uh, kind of stress sort of the uncertainty of a name like this that's sort of in the trading world? It's bouncing around and and kind of stress that maybe you're, you're looking at things on a more long term that it's sort of water were to find mm -hmm. its level. This is where you could see it ending up. For sure. So we obviously look at we look at uncertainty here at Morningstar, but at the same time, I would I would just reiterate that. When there are sell-offs for long-term investors, uh, those sell-offs can be opportunities, mm -hmm. which ex is, 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 is exactly what happened with CrowdStrike. We saw this happen with Fortinet. We saw this happen with Palo, with Zscaler, the four large cybersecurity names that we cover. The earnings volatility or or such news flow that can that can damage the stock's valuation on 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 on, uh, on the stock market uh, can be actually good news. For long-term investors who can build up their positions or increase their positions as long as they're sure that the long-term thesis on the company holds, uh, which which uh, our long-term thesis on CrowdStrike held uh, despite the July 19th outage, just based on how embedded this company is into uh, your 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 uh, average enterprise's infrastructure um, and how strong their execution has been and how sticky their solutions are. Yeah, and uh, Ahmed, along those lines, I, I happen to just take a look at some of your coverage universe and some of the names that you cover. And an example, I think, of uh, what you're describing, which is, hey, news flow where something causes a stock to sell off, but the general picture doesn't change. Would, would Alphabet fit that bill right now of a name that might be presenting that kind of an opportunity uh, for investors? I happen to notice it seems that is one of the names that, uh, I mean, your, your price target at 220, obviously way above the 170-ish the uh, current stock price. Uh, is that a name that kind of fits what you're describing? Yeah, uh, uh, precisely. Right. So if you're if you're we think of it as, as almost a time arbitrage. So if you're a long term investor with investment horizon, you know, three, five, ten years, um, you're investing in the, you're investing in holding that name versus an investor who wants an exit in the next six months. Now, if the next six months there is going to be volatility, as we saw in, with, with CrowdStrike or Palo in February mm -hmm. or, or Fortinet, a couple of quarters ago, or with currently with Alphabet, you're going to stay away from that name. You're probably going to trim your position, which is going to create downward pressure on price. Uh, but if you're a long-term investor and you're sure of the long-term thesis, uh, you can you can buy that that stock at a reasonable at a reasonable price, which is exactly uh, what we see play out with Alphabet with the antitrust um, uh, a noise or that that's depressing valuations right now. Really, really, really good stuff. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. Enjoy uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll get back to it, of course, uh, you know, on Friday. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank uh, you. Great insights into CrowdStrike. And the bonus in Alphabet as well. Ahmed Khan, uh, equity analyst of, of technology at Morningstar.